Welcome to July Set News. My name is Robin Houston. We have a massive problem, and that problem is deep fakes. And what I'm talking about is uh, there was a video that was put out. This is from uh, a company by the name of Eleven Labs showing their uh, audio cloning technology. And I'm going to play this video. It's about 38 seconds or so. But when you're listening to this, think to yourself how easy it would be to fool a person into a scam. Think how easy it would be to fool a person who thinks it's a politician talking. Think how easy it would be for... Uh, for them to believe it's a it's an actual uh, head of state or a country or a military personnel or something that could really damage people in the long run. Just take a listen to this and tell me what you think. Not as an expert, but as a concerned citizen. One of the 400,000 people who marched in the streets of New York on Sunday. And the billions of others around the world who want to solve our climate crisis. As an actor, I pretend for a living. I play fictitious characters, often solving fictitious problems. I believe that mankind has looked at climate change in that same way, as if it were a fiction. As if pretending that climate change wasn't real would somehow make it go away. But I think we all know better than that now. Scary stuff, right? So I put this out on Twitter and I said, uh, can Bitcoin fix this as a, as a joke? And then uh, some people were like, yeah, Bitcoin can fix that because it can do this. I'm like, I don't think that's r remotely even possible. And what I was getting to the point of was, was this. I still believe that Bitcoin can't fix everything. And there is a place for other, as people re reluctantly will call them, S-coins. So... When I think about the things that could actually help us, it'd be something like this. This was an article that just dropped uh, today. European Union discusses using zero-knowledge proofs for digital IDs. First of all, what the heck is a zero-knowledge proof or ZK proofs? In its most basic sense, a zero-knowledge proof thought of as a protocol through which a digital authentication process can be facilitated without the use of any passwords or their sensitive data. So just think about all the different email accounts that you log into, all your bank accounts, everything else. And also think about all the different uh, personal data that you have had hacked that is floating around the internet. That is what zero knowledge proof can get rid of. And it also can do as far as authentication, which we can get rid of stuff like this, hopefully, as time goes on. So as a result, no, no information either from the senders or receiver's end can be compromised in any way. So when we're talking about digital IDs, just wait, actually gets pretty good with zero knowledge proofs. So on February 9th, Research and Energy Committee included the standard of zero knowledge proofs in its amendments to the European Digital Identity Framework or EID. And it was voted in by 55 votes to eight. So pretty good. It wasn't even close. 55 yes, to eight nay. And this specifies that AU, EU citizens would be granted full control of their data with the option to decide what information to share and with whom. Here's the statement. The new EID would allow citizens to identify and authenticate themselves online without having to resort to commercial providers like we just talked about, as is the case today. Practice to raise trust, security, and privacy concerns. And then uh, another statement from Jonas Fredrickson, the senior director for EU government affairs at Circle. First of all, uh, Circle, the company that is responsible for USDC, has a senior director for EU government affairs. If you don't think Circle and their CBDC is going to go is going to go pretty far, or excuse me, it's not CBDC, stable coin. I'm sorry, is going to go far. I mean, just look at uh, the people that, that they put into power or around the world to kind of overlook what things are going on. And also, if you want to dig deep into the stable coin issue, especially with uh, what is a security, what is not a security, and Gary Gensler, and all the things that were going on, we did a pretty comprehensive show on NFA Live just uh, just yesterday. Uh, it was me. Uh, ben and a uh, guy from Coin Bureau. We went over a litany of different things. So I'm going to link that in the description. It'll explain a lot about how, honestly, I got some things wrong uh, as far as with what the SEC is wanting and what exchanges are wanting as far as stable coins and staking. But I digress. We'll get back to this piece and finish up. Jonas states this, the proposal would facilitate the emergence of new business models and opportunities in the digital economy. Zero knowledge proofs. So when we took a look at this and we, and we think about AI, because this is all AI generated, we start to think about the jobs that are going to be lost. But I think it's just like in the late, early, mid to late 90s when the internet came about and people thought that all the jobs would be wiped out because the internet would take it. It's not the case. It's just that the jobs would transform into something else. I see 
is a lot of people are going to use the AI and they're going to be massively wealthy. And the ones that don't utilize this tool to help them scale are going to fall behind. But to finish up to today, as far as zero knowledge proofs, when I think about zero knowledge proofs, I, I think it's a great technology. I think about some projects, one of those being Polygon. I don't know if you know this, but uh, Polygon, they're going to launch their uh, mainnet, their zero knowledge EVM on March 27th. And this has been quite some time coming. So they're going to help us out with privacy, hopefully a little bit of through, throughput. And then uh, I think they've already fixed the issue that they had with uh, transaction costs and things like that, actually uh, in reverse. So this looks pretty good for Polygon as we're talking about zero knowledge proofs. And now the EU wants to use them. Again, look at the companies or the products that are building in the bear because they will crush it in the bull. On top of that, Polygon, there was a, a little statement from uh, Ryan Wyatt. Ryan is the president of Polygon Labs and just announced that Square Onyx has announced they're building on Polygon. I don't know if you know Square Onyx, but uh, I always say that wrong, but correct me in the comments section. But they're responsible for this little game called Final Fantasy. Don't know if you heard about it. Seems to be pretty big with the kids. And uh, they are the ones that are going to come out and say, you know what? We want to build on Polygon. On top of that, you've had Disney, Starbucks, Nike, also uh, a platform I've uh, talked about before, Genso Kishi. Uh, they're also all building on Polygon and a host of other things. So I think Polygon is doing pretty well. And before we go on, let me make things crystal clear. I'm super biased. So the things that I talk about, you have to understand, I own all of them. So I know that with like Zcash and uh, Snarks and ZK Rollups and things like that, that Zcash, those are things, I just don't own Zcash. I really never really got into it. So I don't talk about it too much. So it's up to you to do your own research, but just know that if I'm talking about it on this channel, I own that crypto. Just wanna make that 100% transparent and clear. Also, speaking of things that are moving in the right direction as far as with digital assets, Sony, Eyes Investments in uh, Web3 projects. I'm not gonna go over this because it's just a it's just an incubator program they're gonna roll out uh, from March to June, but it looks like Sony, which is a pretty massive conglomerate globally, they're gonna start to roll these things out and look into Web3 projects, which could help, I think, a little bit of notoriety and use case for crypto. Now, I just wanna finish up with this. The reason that I talked about that Bitcoin can't fix this is because it can't fix those, those deep fakes. Not, not till I, I can see right now. And one of the things that I, always concerned me when I got into crypto, what didn't concern me, it, was, it, was, it gave me hope, is that all the Bitcoin maxis, they talked about how Bitcoin can fix everything. Bitcoin is awesome. All the rest of these different uh, uh, solutions and projects, they're just there to take away money for that you would put into Bitcoin and hold oil and diamond hands forever. And they said, don't worry, because we're going to build everything on top of Bitcoin because it's the most secure computerized network on the entire planet. And I bought in the narrative. But now as I see things moving forward, I kind of look and I'm like, why aren't we doing more things with Bitcoin? And here's a prime example. And this will be the last story. Ordinals. So ordinals, if you don't know, this was just rolled out about a month ago or so. I, I'm, I always get the dates wrong. But what it is, what it essentially does is that Ordinal's digital assets are inscribed directly onto Satoshi's, the lowest denomination of Bitcoin, without needing a side chain or token. Developers have inscribed JPEGs, audio, video, and even video games to test the limits. Essentially, it's Bitcoin NFTs. And I just looked at them like, that's great. Now, it might slow you know, uh, the process down for Bitcoin. It might raise a little bit of the fees, but I'm sure the, I'm sure the miners don't mind. But when I see this statement, despite pushback from Bitcoin purists, ordinals show no signs of slowing down. I think to myself, what are we doing? We talked about how Bitcoin could do anything and do everything and don't worry, we'll build on it. And now we get a new use case and the max is like, no, we don't want to do this. So maybe I'm seeing this wrong. Let me know where I'm incorrect in the comment section. But it's just concerning to me that we, we see a new utility and the max is like, we don't want that. It's only going to be whatever they say it is for this week. And then lastly, I would just say, if you want to see what, what's going on with ordinals, um, there's a website linked in the description called gamma.io. And it's kind of like the, the open sea of Bitcoin NFTs. You can just see uh, how things are denominated and, and the things that are moving around. This thing's called Stacks. That is the, uh, the smart contract platform on top of Bitcoin. And you can see there's a lot of different things that are going on. And it looks like there's some, honestly, there's some pretty expensive Bitcoin NFTs out there. 
But uh, that's it. Just want to bring it to your attention, see what you think. But that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. That's it for today. Thank you so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.